What's going on guys? This is going to be the first video in a series for teaching you how to write scripts for the RSP client. Um, as I've noticed there are not very many if any video tutorials out there on how to do this. Um, and there are some prerequisites before I get started for uh, actually writing scripts. You can't just be any Joe Schmo off the streets and expect to be able to write scripts. You do need at least a basic understanding of the Java programming language, which I really recommend. I'm personally a um, former computer science major. That's how I learned it. I actually started in high school. Um, however, I've heard very good things and I have a couple friends who have learned from Code Academy um, and this will teach you all the basics pretty much everything you'll need to know for writing your first script um, and it doesn't take very long if you dedicate yourself to it and grind through it you can finish it in two days maybe even a day so um, yeah there you go Code Academy check it out if you want to learn Java also uh, a little tribute here to uh, some current news. Who knows, this could be fake news nowadays, but Tech 9 RIP just died today. On, uh, well, I guess maybe not, but uh, yeah, just gonna hit you with that one. Alright, so. <clears throat> Sorry. To get started here, obviously you need the knowledge in Java. And after that, uh, step one. This is going to be, um, as you can probably see by the title of the video, whatever I call it, just basic uh, setting up the environment to begin writing scripts. I will have a following video in this series which will um, go into actually writing your first script. And um, yeah, so be sure to check that one out. All right, so. First things first, go to rspeer.com, um, or I guess .org, and you want to make sure that you have the, uh, where is it, it's in a weird spot, I know, uh, I should have looked at this before, obviously you want to make sure you have the client, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And let this oh, go away. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, it's in development center. Sorry about that. Um RSP Yeah, it's SDK. Yes, yeah, so you want to make sure you have the rspeer.jar. Um, this is going to be your link to the API. Um, so that's step one, and what you do with that after you have it downloaded is um, look at your RSphere folder, um, which after you run the launcher that you download, or the client I guess, it will automatically create this. And that is typically located, at least on Windows, in your um, C drive or whatever your operating system is on and users your username and then look for RSP scripts nope um, sorry wrong RSP folder ignore that I don't know what that there is for it's a uh, C users username and then documents and then RSP and then you have your scripts folder which is where your compiled script is going to go. Um, however, we'll worry about that later. And you want to drag this rspeer.jar into your actual um, cache folder on rspeer. And I'm not going to replace that because I don't want to mess anything up. Alright, once that is done, Obviously, you need Java 8 installed, and I assume that you have that all set up. Um, if you need to run the jar fix, uh, run that. Uh, because it, you wouldn't even be able to open RSP and do that step if uh, you did not have Java 8. Uh, second step 
if you've never programmed a Java before, you will more than likely need this. And that is the JDK uh, for Java 8. And this is a Java, div uh, sorry, Java development kit, can't speak. Um, and again, Java 8, because that's what our superior uses. So you can either, I think now, just as of this past week, they made it so you have to make an Oracle account to download the development kit. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to do that more than likely. And you can get any one of these. I, I think I just have this one, make sure I recommend getting the EXE, so then you can just double click that and <coughs> have it set up. And uh, it would be the 64-bit, because I have a 64-bit processor, okay. So once you have that installed, uh, just go through all the default settings to install it. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. You don't. It will automatically place it in the right location. Um, now, last thing you're going to need to install is IntelliJ. And really, you can use any idea of your choice. But um, in my opinion, IntelliJ is uh, very integrated. And I learned to code on our peer. Or learned to code scripts on IntelliJ. Um, but really you can do it in any IDE if you want one of my friends I know does all his coding in uh, Vim in Linux so that's a little more uh, hardcore and intense if you're up for that he had to put a lot of research into figure out how to compile it and whatnot but um, yeah I definitely recommend IntelliJ so yeah go to here download it <coughs> sorry my voice is really scratchy and yeah, download it, install it, and then you're going to want to obviously open it. And this is where all the magic is going to happen. And it is going to take a while to open, what isn't it? Yeah, so IntelliJ indexes pretty much every line in your code, which makes it um, so you can easily... Uh, search for certain variables throughout your entire program and uh, various other cool things which is why it takes so long to open so we're just gonna wait here for that and you know what let me check it might be opening up in my other desk so apologize for that wait uh, well if I can remember cut that bit out Or if I don't, in the meantime, you can take a gander at all my um, desktop icons. <laughs> my neatly organized desktop icons. You just hope they don't give away any personal information. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, well. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to open up IntelliJ for the first time and it's going to bring up a startup window and you can just simply click, there should be an option to have new project or just a new button and um, from there you're going to, like I said, a new project and just leave this as default make sure the SDK is the um, Java 1.8 and click next and leave this default whenever there's some windows that pops up by the way just leave it as default more than likely if you don't know what it means um, that's always the best bet at least in my opinion and then you can name it whatever we're going to call it first script and I can't spell what am I okay that's good <laughs> Sorry about that. Alright. And here we go. So this is your... This is what you're going to see after you go through the setup. And this is where, like I said, all the magic is going to happen. This is where you're going to 
spend hours of your time. No, I was kidding. Um, this is where you're gonna actually code um, your scripts. And if you want to, you can spend hours of your time on your scripts if you really get into it like I have. Um, yeah, so now to the last couple of steps to finish setting up the environment so that you can actually begin using RSPR's API and whatnot. Um, first of all, when you start coding, I'll probably include this in the um, next video as well. But you're going to want to go off the source folder and I'll just call it main. It's going to be your main class. Um, you should know what that is if you have done Java before. Or taken the code academy, more than likely. It's your main class. Um, and to actually set up the environment now. But again, make sure you're using 1.8. Make sure that you're using language level 8 and nothing in the project else we can change as a name and whatnot. But the two things you do need to do to actually set up your environment is go to modules, make sure that you're in the dependencies tab, and um, you probably won't see anything here. Actually, yes, you will. If you don't see anything here, just click the plus, new module, blah, blah, blah. And then over here on the right, click this plus. You're going to do new, um, or I guess just jars or directories. And you're going to want to find your RSPR folder again. Um, like I mentioned before, it's in your C users, username, and then documents, which I just lost. I had it. Documents, RSPR. And then once you're in here, you're going to open cache and the rspeer.jar folder which may have automatically been created or if worst case scenario to download it like I demonstrated earlier just select that and click OK and then this is going to give you access to the API which you could switch or sorry which you have to switch to um, provided scope and now that's all set up last thing you need to do in the environment sorry I must get up a little bit I know this video is taking a while is go to the artifacts tab, uh, add a jar, and for module dependencies, leave this as default. You don't need to set a main class or anything. Click OK. And um, two things: set the output directory for your jar file you're creating. This is going to be your actual script launcher that our speakers get access. Um, again, see users username or your, whatever drive your operating system's on, documents, and rspeer, and this time just select the scripts folder. So then it's going to output the jar file to the scripts folder. Boom. And I like to include in project builds, so anytime you build or compile, they call it build in IntelliJ, your project, um, it's going to also rebuild the artifact, which is the jar file and make sure sometimes I've had it where the wow where the um, compile output is on this side and if it is you can just um, what do you do there should there would be an option to move it over to the other side yeah put an output root you right click on it and put an output root um, and make sure you have that in there and then once that's done, you can just apply and OK. And that concludes setting up the environment. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over actually writing your first script. So be sure to check it out. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day.